Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, a podcast where we talk about real-world applications for DLT. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to promote the entire Hedera ecosystem. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Sham Nagarajan, who is one of the newest board members for the Hedera Governing Council. Hi, Sham. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me on this uh, podcast. Very thrilled to be here. Good, good. So, you know, I know a lot of the community is very familiar with IBM, longtime council member. Can you share how you got involved with the Hedera project and community? Well, my journey starts all the way in, I think, probably 2017 or 18, when I met uh, Mance and uh, Lehman at uh, one of the IBM conferences. And uh, um, that conversation was always uh very interesting because it was the first first time where there is a public element to blockchain and as well as a permission element of blockchain. So um, that always sparked my interest. Since then, we have been through a big journey. I mean, IBM has always been a big proponent of enterprise application of uh, DLT and blockchain. And uh, I've been in the space for seven years um, in the journey all the way from this beginning of uh, our alliance with the uh, Hyperledger Foundation and Linux Foundation to uh, what it is right now. I've uh, seen the market mature, I mean, all the way from just uh, POCs and talk about education to more mission critical application and enterprising enterprises embracing the idea of DLT to solve their, their uh, real business issues. So in this journey, I think we are at a crucial point where um, Hedera brings something that is necessary as an accelerator for the market to move. So that's that's one of the reasons why I am excited to be part of uh, the Hedera uh, journey and as a board member to help uh, share some of my experiences. And so, you know, I know you've been engaged with the council for quite some time. Can you share a little bit about some of your work on the council so far and, and why that cho- that led you to, to decide to run for um, for the board? Well, my, my association with the council started in uh, January of 2020, 2022, I'm sorry. Um, before my association, I actually had a number of my colleagues who were part of the council and uh, we, um, the, 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 we were responsible for driving a lot of initiatives, including the HCS uh, uh, adapter and the integration connector that's used for um, hybrid situations between Hyperledger Fabric and as well as Hedera. Um, since I've joined the council, I've been championing more application of Hedera for enterprise uh, use, uh, use cases. And I've been, um, bringing my experience to share with other council members on the adoption journey, uh, talking about the right way to um, induct new members and about collaboration through our uh, corporate committees and as well as member committees and so on. Wonderful. And what do you, you know, hope to accomplish during your term as board member? Well, you know, my experience is helping um, enterprise adopt and leverage this technology to accelerate their their journey to, in, in adopting uh, DLT for mission critical use cases. I will continue focusing on that. I will also be spending a lot lot more time in helping the Hedera team orient the protocol and as well as its tools so it can accelerate the adoption in the market. And finally, I think um, the world is moving towards what we call as a hybrid of public and permission and as well as the private. And this is a very very critical place where 
the first use cases are starting to come up and I hope I can bring my expertise and help orient the maturity of these as they come into the market. And I think that's a common theme that we're hearing, you know, as we've been talking to some of the new board members, you know, I think with many forms of computing or new, you know, paradigms, you see people sort of start have initially start off saying, gosh, I'm going to go private or gosh, I'm going to go public, right? This reminds me a lot of private versus public cloud. And it turns out that in almost all organizations, it is some combination of the two um, and being able to drive that interoperability so that you can actually use it more broadly. So <laughs> I'm in consulting and the typical answer you hear from a consultant is it depends. Right? <laughs> And uh, um, no one customer has um, a need for just one way of doing things, right? Um, I've, I've seen applications where a private uh, DLT solution is more than good enough and is actually more appropriate. And I have seen situations where you need a bigger ecosystem and public is probably more appropriate in those situations. Right. Um, I don't think there is one solution for all, but what as a transition that we are seeing in the market is that as you start with one, you're, you're stu- soon getting to a point where you want to expand, you want to collaborate, you want to um, expose your assets for a broader market and bring in liquidity then those warrant a different kind of uh, a mindset, thinking, um, alignment with security and uh, leveraging the, the right way of putting in and using zero knowledge proofs and the likes to enable the new ways of uh, doing business. And that's where we are. And Herrera is right in the middle of that journey. It's a public uh, protocol. While it is permission in a way that it is governed by uh, 27 different organizations that are focused on enterprise standards and are well-renowned and as well as their way of uh, uh, doing consensus and staking is uh, really something different than what other layer one protocols uh, offer. So interesting situation. Uh, blockchain interoperability is here and uh, hybrid chains are here. And it's a question of leveraging the technology to build the best business models. Absolutely. And as you put on your consulting hat, are you seeing any particular use cases or sort of collections of areas where people are most interested in using the technology? Well, I'll tell you, in the last four or five years, we've uh, coming from an enterprise application perspective, um, we've definitely seen alignment of using this technology for providence. That's been proved and actually really um, um, adopted by many organizations in order to achieve that and bring their ecosystem uh, closer to what they already had. What we are starting to see is these um, these provenance chains have a lot of um, assets that are available to be unlocked and um, offered to organizations either as investment opportunities or as exchange of value to other things in the public market. So we're starting to see asset, asset digitization and asset tokenization that uh, are coming out from the enterprises into the public market. Look, we've always, over the last uh, 15 years, we've always promoted the concept of data as a product. And it's true. I mean, Bloomberg and the likes actually commoditized that. Um, what we are finding is that these data that's generated is sitting behind huge firewalls and don't have a, a proper opportunity to be assetized and um, shared for commercialization purposes. And what we now believe is that data 
while respecting the security, privacy, and as well as ownership and control can now be um, assertized and tokenized in a world where new business models can be had. So you're talking about both um, sort of uh, monetizing data as well as actual assets in the supply chain? That is correct. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, it's every, it sounds like every asset that a, an organization could think that they have, right? Anything of value, um, there is something that can be, you know, that can be put on um, a DLT, can be uh, sort of elevated. So to your point that you are maybe perhaps just seeing the metadata, you're not seeing, you know, the specific individual's data, but you are able to extract value from that. Yeah, it's it's it applies for, for both tangible assets and as well as intangible assets, right? So uh, intangible assets like mortgages or uh, patents and uh, copyrights and trademarks are a big, big part of this ecosystem, which is, you know, are treated as illiquid assets. But the reality is that they can be liquid if they are controlled and uh, the ownership and as well as the uh, licensing rights and the royalties can be very efficiently exchanged across multiple parties. And that's where um, DLT technologies come into the play. Wonderful. Shem, thank you for joining us today. Any other words of wisdom or thoughts for the future before we let you go? Well, um, Hedera has got very uh, interesting technology and it's got the right governance structure that uh, permission and uh, uh, public chains need in the, in the, in the world. So um, my, my couple of words is that uh, let's, let's accelerate and uh, increase the adoption in the market. So uh, feel free to try it. Absolutely. We are all for that. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time and have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you.